What's up, gang? So um, this is the second video in this video series, and I just wanted to break it down with you, give you a little bit more of a presentation and something to walk through. And um, uh, this topic that I'm going to cover today is on the psychology of a customer. Now, I told you that uh, revenue and raving fans, uh, this group, uh, and the information that I provide is going to be based around brand building and direct response. But the cornerstone is psychology of a customer. And how do we figure out what the customer needs, wants, desires are so that we can uh, become a leader in the space of pro providing value to them? And uh, how do we make sales based on our products and our services that we provide? So the first thing that I want you to think about in, uh, in your, your customer experience that you have is how do you want the customer to feel? How do you want someone to feel when you're communicating with them? And you could do this a number of, a number of ways. And that's like, do you want them to feel excited? Is there like a big promotion happening and that, uh, and that's something uh, exciting comes around only once in a while, maybe once in a quarter for your business. Um, I'm in the middle of a big launch right now uh, that's that's launching at the end of this month. And a big thing that we're going to be hitting on is excitement. How can we get people excited about this uh, this thing that we're doing? Do we want them to feel connected? Is there a group? Is there a community uh, aspect of this? Do we want them to feel understood? Are you speaking their language? Is there nuances? Is there verbiage that you use in your business and in your um, in your niche or in your industry that that resonates and hits a certain way to your customers? A lot of times I've seen. Uh, well, this this happens a lot in drop shipping, right? There's drop shippers, people who come and want to make a quick buck in uh, in the industry in in business. And what they'll see, they'll find a product, uh, then they'll go out and find the market uh, and try to sell that product to the market to make some quick cash. But the market can read them based on how their uh, how the customer feels with the messaging. That eh, something's just not aligning here. Something doesn't feel right. Whereas if a drop shipper who wanted to make quick money finds the product, finds the customer, understands the nuances, the language, the verbiage that uh, that the customer resonates with and that the industry resonates with, they're the ones who actually have a higher conversion rate because now you're speaking this unwritten language. This, now it does. Now that's not just for drop shipping. That was one example, but you are going to have a deeper customer relationship if you're speaking the verbiage that 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 those customers are using. So do they feel understood? Is there a sense of belonging? Uh, if someone's doing business with you, do they feel like they belong to some sort of tribe or some sort of group? Is there some sort of intangible aspect? Do they feel heard? Is it the communication that you're giving uh, or that you're, you're providing back and forth with your customer? Do they feel like you get that? Do they feel like they have a voice or an opinion? Um, if, if you're launching a new product, are you asking for co continual customer feedback? Are you keeping the dialogue open in your communication channels or is it just push, 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 push? Or are you asking questions or um, uh, seeing what how other customers are using your products or your services. Do they feel empowered? So can you empower your customers to do more, be more, have more, see more, experience more? You know, uh, how can you, are you empowering them? Now, these feelings can go on and on and on and on and on. I've only listed out six here, but how do you make your customers feel something when, when they're receiving communication from your company, whether it's in the form of an email, SMS, uh, messenger, uh, an ad, you know, whatever it is, how, how does someone feel when they interact with your business? That's the first question I want you to be asking. The second part of this psychology piece with your customer and how you're 
generating more sales and building up more of a brand is how can you elevate the customer experience? And I'm going to use a brick and mortar business here. Now, uh, most DTC companies are going to be online, but I think this this example of using Target really hits home because you could move so much faster and so much quicker and have so much more connection in a digital world rather than brick and mortar. But let me show you what's happening when you focus on customer experience in a brick and mortar world and how that can translate to online and digital. And you're just gonna have a, just a more hockey stick-like effect if you focus on this. So Target, spends billions of dollars a year in advertising and marketing. Last year in 2020, they spent $1.5 billion. So they spend a ton of money and they want to make sure that they're getting the returns. They don't spend money. Target, Target's not a business that spends $1.5 billion and, you know, crosses their fingers and hopes that, you know, they get a return out. It, their marketing managers, their executives, their VPs really know like, hey, if we put this dollar in, we want to be able to track it and be able to get dollars out. So they want to. Sorry, I had to pause the video because there was someone my neighbors doing something with power tools or something like that. Uh, so I'm back. And um, where was I? So they spend $1.5 billion a year uh, in advertising costs alone. That's not, they don't make that, they don't make 1.5, they spend 1.5 uh, and then they get a return on top of that. So it's huge, they spend a ton of money. Now, what they've also done <clears throat> is they've been positioned really, really high. 39th position on uh, Fortune 500, one of the world's 38th uh, on the world's most admired companies in Fortune magazine. Um, they, they've done a ton here. And what else? So what they're focused on right now, we are in the middle of a huge customer experience revamp with them. And they said, how can, and right now you can see here, they'll spend somewhere between 4 million and 10 million per store in, uh, in a remodel. And also in, in this article right here, $7 billion in a multi-year program to remodel their stores based on customer experience and feedback, which is huge. So why are they doing this? Well, in this Forbes article, you could see this is uh, an interview with the executive vice president and chief marketing, digital and strategy officer. He says, but we have to balance the math and the magic because when targets at its best, we spark something deeper in our guests. This is why having a, the psychological piece of your business and how you're communicating to your customers is so important. It's the magic that lays behind everything, that lays behind the promotions or the products that you're offering or the service that you're offering. Like Target gets it that they, they're spending billions, $7 billion in the, the way they make their customers feel because it's the magic sweet spot. It's when they're at their best, they can hit that. So how do we do this? We speak one-to-one. So we speak directly to a customer. A customer wants to feel like they're being spoken to in a dialogue. So you don't want to have to do this. In, you don't want them to feel like you're speaking to the masses. And how can we craft? So this is a question that I'm going to ask you. How can you craft messages so your customer feels like you're speaking directly to them? How can you do that? This will help you in in. Uh, amplifying how a customer feels. So you don't want to write your messages to the masses when you're typing out emails or promos uh, or a newsletter or text messages or a Facebook post, you know, or an Instagram post. You don't write to the masses. You write to one person. You want them to feel like you're talking directly to them. 
you're also going to use different communication channels. So because you're, you have a ton of customers all over the world, all of these people consume content and get messaging a little bit differently. If you try to call me on my phone, I will not answer it. Even if I see your name pop up and you're a contact in my phone, I will not answer it. I hate talking on the phone. I would much rather send a text message. So that's my preferred way of communicating with people, even people that I love and care about and appreciate. So what that means for you and your business, it's going to take a little bit more work, but you need to have multi-communication approaches here. That includes email, SMS, messenger, any other ways that you can communicate with your customer. And you're going to do this for all of your broadcasts, all of your messaging. And what you're, and I'm sure what you're saying right now is, oh, but someone who gets my email and then they're going to get a text message and then they're going to get a Facebook message. Are they going to be inundated or are they going to be overwhelmed? Absolutely not. Because the people who choose a communication channel that they like, they're going to tune everything out. So for me, if SMS is my preferred method, I'm going to tune out email. I'm going to tune out Facebook Messenger. I might see it come through or get a notification on it, but I'm not going to sit there and read it. I'm going to focus on the channel that I enjoy and the way that I want to consume. And this also goes back to how many touch points do you need to keep up with your customer? So how to convert a prospect to a customer, how many times do you need to communicate with them? It used to be seven. It used to be seven touch points. Now it's some people are saying 15. Some people are saying above 20 touch points. So, uh, and really, it's, it's probably more than 20 today because we are being inundated with messages all over the place that, uh, that you're just constantly being bombarded. And marketers are now finding new ways to get in front of customers that, uh, or prospects that are really sort of becoming part of people's lives. So it's probably above 20 now, but th here's the thing. This decreases when a problem meets solution. So if a customer has a problem and you offer that solution, it's going to take less communication touch points to actually convert that prospect to a customer. So I want you to just keep that in mind as well. So as you're thinking about your customer, where are they, who are they, how do you want them to feel? What sort of experience can you give them? Through what communication channels can you talk to them through? And how can you make them feel like you're speaking to them directly and not the masses? So that is the end of this video. I hope you got a, a bunch of uh, value out of this. Please drop your questions in the comments below this video here. And, um, I'd love to start a dialogue on what you uh, what you're going to implement after you implement something in this video. Just implement one thing, and then just share back the results that you, you've gotten from this. So thank you again, again, Revenue and Raving Fans community. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, the next video is going to be about brand building, and the one following that is all on boosting sales. So. See you guys here in a bit.